Hi, welcome to another podcast episode. I'm Erica. And I am Sam. And I wanted to start this episode by telling a short story. When I was home in Washington State this, uh, this fall, I went with one of my good high school friends to Dairy Queen. Ooh. Do you have Dairy Queens? Oh, of course. In I'm Minnesota. from the Midwest. I don't know. I Maybe think it's... we birthed Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> that you know some chains are not in all you know in all True. the states so yeah uh we have dairy queen in washington and as you know the the main draw of going to dairy queen are the blizzards mm. and oh. every time i'm home i go with this friend my friend luke to dairy queen to get a blizzard which which flavor blizzard i i mix it up um, yeah, this time I, they had a caramel chocolatey one. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know what a blizzard is, it's like a cup of, of soft ice cream with candy or other sweets mixed in. So it's extremely sweet. It's extremely high calorie and delicious. And mm -hmm. it made me think about, um, it made me think about the term guilty pleasure. Mm. And I think I can say with confidence that eating blizzards for me is a guilty pleasure. A guilty pleasure is a something that you do or you consume that makes you happy. Okay, that's the pleasure part. But you feel a little guilty about it because it's probably not the best thing for you. It's not adding a lot of value to your life. Um, it might even be a little bit bad for you, like a blizzard uh, is not good for you, but it brings me joy and I feel a little bit guilty, but I think the pleasure outweighs the guiltiness. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so it can be food, like, like blizzards, or one of my guilty pleasures when I go to the U.S. is boxed mac and cheese. Uh, which oh yeah it's just it's like a comfort food I know it's probably not great for me it doesn't I don't even know that it tastes that great it's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's a familiar taste yeah yeah so it's comforting exactly um, but you can other things can be guilty pleasures so beyond food um, maybe there's a TV show that especially if it's not not high culture like we might call it trashy that's a word we used in our previous episode yeah so if something's trashy it's like <laughs> how would you it's, describe it's trashy? not not high value and it's sort of arbitrary you know who decides what has value and what doesn't um as far as tv shows you know there are some tv shows that teach us about life or that really are they transmit a profound human experience or they're just so bond like they're a bonding experience like friends you know you go to anywhere in the world and you can find someone who's seen friends and you can bond over that like oh i'm a phoebe you're a joey um so i don't think you could call that trashy what you would call trashy is like sort of tv that doesn't or anything that doesn't really add anything that doesn't contribute a lot to your life except pleasure right so i mean a, an example is reality tv um so you might find it highly entertaining to watch say the bachelor mm -hmm. um and i would argue that is a very bonding experience i used to watch a reality show called millionaire matchmaker with my siblings and we we would bond over making fun of this show because it was just, it was hilarious. The people were ridiculous. Yeah. It's this woman who match makes these like mostly like very wealthy men who are just like weird. And then, <laughs> like, so that would be, that's like a guilty pleasure. Like you enjoy it, but it's not contributing anything lasting or really of value. Yeah. To your no life. lesson to be learned, really. I mean, maybe there's some reflection there. My guilty pleasure show is Love is Blind mm. on Netflix. Uh, have you watched that show? I haven't. It's people talking, they, they can't see each other. It's a dating show and they can't see each other but they're speaking through a wall and then they have to propose to get out of that situation and then they actually get married within like four weeks. 
So it's sort of a, a marvel of, you know, what are humans capable? What are we willing to do for love, for, you know, how do we interpret love? How do we interpret uh, life and, and our values? Anyways, it's not that deep. Um, <laughs> and I don't feel like it's uh, adding a lot of value to my life, but I like it. I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I think my, my current guilty pleasure is TikTok. That is it's, um, a big one. And I, I learn stuff on it. I'm entertained by it. Like, I wouldn't say it gives me no value, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also, you know, it's time I spend on it. It's very addictive and it's not something that I'm like, not putting it on my to-do list. Like, yeah. look, watch TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just not going to like get me where I want to be in my life. Yeah. Can you imagine? But also, I think there's a time and place for a guilty pleasure. Like, if I work really hard, maybe I'm editing for a couple of hours, and then I, like, take a mind break and, like, look at TikTok for five minutes. Exactly. And it kind of resets, you know, it gives me a little breathing space, um, gives me a little reward. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Like, how guilty should we feel about guilty pleasures? I obviously enjoy them, and I do them, and I'm not going to stop, you know. Yeah. So, you know, should we feel guilty? Well, maybe if there's something else that we should be doing. If there's work you should be doing or, you know, you're ignoring your friends, you're ignoring your partner in order to watch a trashy TV show, well, maybe yeah. maybe you should feel guilty. But if not, you know, if you're like Erica or or myself, you have some free time, why would why should you feel guilty? Get the blizzard. Get the Look blizzard. at TikTok. Exactly. <laughs> So speaking of guilty pleasures, good things to eat, um, another common phrase in English is you are what you eat. Mm. And I think, I don't know where we hear this one first, um, maybe in health class or when, when we start being aware of like, oh, vegetables are, are better for you than Kraft macaroni and cheese. And so we start repeating to ourselves, well, you are what you eat. So if you eat healthily, then you will be healthy. Yeah, and you found an interesting article talking about some different um, kinds of foods. So what struck me was that spicy foods have been proven to what make people feel more aggressive or act more aggressively? Act more aggressively and perceive aggression. Okay. Perceive more aggression. And I think that's that's really fascinating. So if I eat spicy food, I will interpret other people's behavior as more aggressive. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. And then as and then sweet foods. What kind of reaction does that give? You? Usually a positive one. So high calorie foods and sweet foods like our blizzards and our macaroni and cheese release hormones that make us feel good and happy. So you know. Eating sweet food makes you sweeter. <laughs> and eating spicy food makes you spicier, which I think is really interesting. That is that is fascinating. Hmm. I wonder what eating sour food makes you Ooh, yeah. makes you like. I know. I don't know. I, I really like bitter too, which maybe You don't like bitter. I do like bitter. Me too. I, I love coffee and beer and Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Yeah, but does that make you a bitter person? Like you resent other uh, people? I don't know that it's bitter. <laughs> I'm just naturally bitter, so. <laughs> just, <laughs> Maybe it's, it's my the taste. food. Maybe <laughs> it's the food choices. Maybe I need, I mean, I think of my mom, who's the sweetest person in the world, and she is such a sweet tooth. Like she will eat a bag of gummy worms for lunch. But that's sour too, so I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah it's sweet and sour. Sweet and sour, yeah. Interesting. I have a huge sweet tooth, meaning I love sweet food. Big sweet tooth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. It, it's an interesting article and it's an interesting concept. Like what you eat directly affects how you feel and your personality. But I can think of a huge counterexample, which is India. Mm, yes. You have spent time in India. I was in India last summer for two and a half months. And everything there is spicy, like even pizza is spicy, mm -hmm. but the people are very sweet. Do they eat much sweet food? Not really. Their sweets are not really sugary. Okay. It's more or like 
you know, almond, like nut based almonds and cashews mm. and stuff. And there's sugar or molasses in there, but it's not like, uh, it's not like, uh, I don't know, like a chocolate Slap bar. On the or... face, sweet. Mm -hmm. And I would say American food from the U.S. is extremely sweet, but we might be more aggressive than say yeah. Indian. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember learning in, in a biology class that the hotter a region is, typically the more spicy the food is. And that's because traditionally it would kill the bad bacteria like on the food and in your stomach. So if you're in a hotter climate, you're more likely to have more bacteria, you know, growing in your food. Huh. So then they would use spice to combat that. And yeah. And then when you go further north, there's, there's less, less, less spice. spice and less danger of bacteria. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that also goes hand in hand with my father's theory that if you want a really refreshing beer, you have to get one that's made in a very hot country because they know how to make a very refreshing beer to cool them, cool themselves cool them off. Down, yeah. mm -hmm. Or you're just dying of heat so it feels more refreshing. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, <it's, laughs> yeah. maybe that's another thing, but, uh, hey. but yeah. Okay. Okay, well, this has been a very food-centered podcast. <laughs> Hope you have enjoyed. Hope you're not feeling too hungry. And if you are, um, go enjoy a guilty pleasure. Yes. Why yeah. not? And let us know in the comments what your guilty pleasure is. Mm. We'd love to know. Tell us. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.